The process of extracting and refining copper involves several key stages. Here's a breakdown of the steps involved in copper production. 1. Mining. Copper is typically extracted from copper ores, which are rocks containing a significant amount of copper. The most common, or is chalcopyrite, a copper iron sulfide mineral. Though there are other copper ores like malachite and azurite, copper can also be obtained from secondary sources like scrap metal. Open pit mining or underground mining methods are used to extract copper ores from the earth. Once the ore is mined, it is transported to the processing facility for further treatment. 2. Crushing and grinding. After mining, the ore is crushed and ground into a fine powder to increase the surface area and make it easier to extract the copper. 3. Concentration flotation. The powdered ore is mixed with water and chemicals to create a slurry. This slurry undergoes a process called froth flotation, where air bubbles are introduced, and the copper-containing minerals are floated to the surface while the waste material gang sinks. The copper-rich froth is skimmed off, concentrated, and collected. For smelting, the concentrated ore, known as copper concentrate, contains a high percentage of copper, but is not pure copper yet. To further refine the concentrate, it is heated in a smelting furnace at temperatures around 1-200 degrees Celsius those meals Santano Bentidos. If, during smelting, the concentrate is mixed with flux such as silica or limestone, which helps remove impurities by forming slag, the copper is separated from the slag, forming a molten copper mat, which contains copper in the form of copper sulfate. <laughs> Conversion to blister copper. The copper mat undergoes a process called converting where air is blown through the molten copper to oxidize the sulfur, converting it into sulfur dioxide gas. This results in the formation of blister copper typically around 98-99% to pure copper. 6. Refining. Blister copper is then refined through electrofining where it is used as the anode in an electrolytic cell. The process involves electrolysis. Blister copper is placed in an electrolyte solution typically copper sulfate and sulfuric acid. A current is passed through the cell, causing copper to dissolve from the anode and then played out onto a cathode. The result is electrolytic copper, which is 99.99% pure. 7. Final processing. The purified copper can be cast into billets, rods, or ingots, which are then used in various applications like wiring, plumbing, and industrial machinery. In addition to the primary extraction and refining processes, Copper can also be recycled from scrap copper, which is a more energy-efficient and environmentally friendly method of production. Recycled copper can be reused in a variety of industries, reducing the need for mining. 1. Mining. Copper ores are primarily found in large deposits. The ores are generally located deep underground or in open pit mines. The types of copper ores vary, and the extraction method depends on the ore type. Open pit mining is the more common method, particularly for large ore bodies near the surface. It involves removing large amounts of earth and rock to expose the copper or beneath. Underground mining is used when the copper deposit is too deep to mine by open pit methods. This requires building tunnels or shafts to access the ore. 2. Crushing and grinding. Once the ore is extracted, it's transported to a crushing plant where it is broken down into smaller chunks. After that, the crushed ore is fed into a grinding mill, where it's ground into a fine powder. This increases the surface area for the next step, which is the flotation process. At this stage, the size of the ore particles is typically reduced to less than 0.1 mm in diameter. This fine powder allows for more efficient recovery of copper during flotation. 3. Concentration, froth flotation. The purpose of the flotation process is to separate the valuable copper minerals from the unwanted materials, such as iron, silica, and other impurities. The fine powder is mixed with water chemicals, and air in flotation tanks or cells. The chemicals used include collectors hydrophobic chemicals that help the copper minerals attach to air bubbles, and frothers that create stable foam. When air is bubbled through the slurry, the copper minerals, such as chalcopyrite, attach to the bubbles and float to the surface. The waste material, called tailings, sinks to the bottom. The copper-rich foam is then skimmed off and further processed. This flotation process increases the copper concentration to about 25 to 30 percent. 4. Smelting. After flotation, the concentrate still contains a mix of copper, iron, sulfur, and other elements. The next step is smelting, where the concentrate is heated to high temperatures to separate the copper from impurities. Blast furnaces or flash smelting furnaces are commonly used for this. 
In a flash smelting furnace, concentrate is heated rapidly, and sulfur is burned off as sulfur dioxide gas. This leaves a molten mixture containing copper, iron, and sulfur. The process produces copper mat, which typically contains about 60 to 70 percent copper, and a mix of iron and sulfur. 5. Converting to blister copper, the copper mat from the smelting stage contains a high percentage of sulfur and other impurities, so it needs further refinement. This is done in the converter furnace or converter, where the mat is blown with air or oxygen to oxidize the sulfur and other impurities. Air is blown through the molten copper mat, causing sulfur to oxidize and form sulfur dioxide gas, which is vented off. The result is blister copper, which contains 98 to 99 percent copper with impurities like iron and sulfur being removed in the form of slag. The remaining copper is still not pure enough for most industrial uses. 6. Refining elect The final step in copper refining is elect- This is a process of purifying blister copper to 99.99% purity. The blister copper is cast into large anodes and placed into an electrolytic cell. The cell contains a copper sulfate solution, which acts as an electrolyte. The anodes are immersed in the solution and an electric current is passed through the electrolyte. Copper from the anodes dissolves into the electrolyte, and is then deposited onto the cathodes as pure copper. The impurities in the blister copper, such as gold, silver, and platinum, either remain in the anode as a sludge or are separated and collected. The cathode copper is typically 99.99% pure, making it ready for industrial applications. 7. Final Processing and Applications after electrofining, the copper is cast into various forms like wire. Copper is widely used in electrical applications because of its excellent conductivity. Sheet and plate. Used for products like roofing, plumbing, and manufacturing parts. Alloys. Copper is often alloyed with other metals like tin to make bronze, or zinc to make brass, to create materials with desirable properties for specific applications. Environmental considerations and sustainability. Recycling. Copper is one of the most recycled metals in the world. Recycled copper uses significantly less energy compared to primary extraction, making it an environmentally friendly option. Recycled copper retains its properties, so it can be used repeatedly without degradation in quality. Environmental impact. Copper mining and smelting have significant environmental impacts, including greenhouse gas emissions, water usage, and the release of sulfur dioxide. New technologies such as hydrometallurgical processing and cleaner smelting techniques, aim to reduce these environmental effects. Hydrometallurgical processing, which includes methods like heap leaching or solvent extraction electrowining, SXU is used for extracting copper from low-grade ores or secondary sources scrap. It involves dissolving copper from ores using acid and then recovering the copper from the solution. 1. Advanced mining techniques. In addition to traditional open pit and underground mining, there are more advanced techniques used for copper extraction. Heap leaching. This is a hydrometallurgical process where low-grade ores are placed in large piles heaps, and a leaching solution, usually sulfuric acid, is sprayed over them. The acid dissolves copper from the ore, and the solution is then collected in a pond or basin, from which copper is extracted using solvent extraction electrowinning as Heap leaching is commonly used for ores that are too low in grade to be processed by conventional methods. It's more cost-effective and can be used on ores that would otherwise be considered uneconomical to mine. Insight to leaching. This method involves injecting a leaching solution directly into the OR body while it's still underground. The solution dissolves the copper, and the leachate is pumped to the surface. This process minimizes surface disturbance, but is used on copper deposits that are located deep underground. Caton fill mining. This technique is used for underground copper mining. It involves removing ore from a chamber in small controlled stages, with the void being filled with waste rock or other materials to support the surrounding rock. This reduces the risk of collapsing tunnels. 2. Smelting process. Flash smelting. One of the more modern and efficient methods for smelting copper is flash smelting. This process is different from traditional blast furnaces and offers several advantages. Flash furnace. The ore concentrate is blown into a high temperature furnace where it is rapidly heated. The advantage of flash smelting is that it can directly handle concentrates that contain a high amount of sulfur, making it efficient in processing copper ores without the need for The sulfur dioxide produced is collected for use in sulfuric acid production, which is a valuable byproduct.
Energy efficiency. Flash smelting uses less energy compared to traditional smelting methods because the concentrate is heated rapidly, reducing the amount of time and energy required to smelt the copper. This method also reduces the amount of slag produced. Direct blending. Flash smelting allows for the direct blending of different types of ores and concentrates. This means that ores with varying compositions can be processed together, leading to better resource utilization. 3. Environmental impact and sustainability in copper production. The extraction and processing of copper come with significant environmental concerns. Here's how the industry is working to reduce its environmental footprint. Sulfur dioxide emissions. One of the byproducts of smelting copper is sulfur dioxide, so which can cause environmental problems like acid rain. However, flue gas desulfurization FGD technologies are increasingly being implemented to capture sulfur dioxide and convert it into sulfuric acid. This helps reduce emissions and provides an additional useful byproduct that can be sold in industries such as agriculture and chemical manufacturing. Recycling in circular economy. Copper is highly recyclable and can be reused repeatedly without losing quality. This is an important environmental benefit because recycling copper requires far less energy than extracting and refining it from ore. The circular economy approach promotes using recycled copper for new products, reducing the need for mining and the environmental impact associated with it. Water management. Copper mining and refining are water-intensive processes. As water is essential for operations, Companies are working on improving water recycling, reducing water consumption, and managing water discharge to minimize impact on surrounding ecosystems. Some operations also use desalination for water supply, especially in arid regions where fresh water resources are scarce. Tailings and waste management. Tailings the leftover material after copper has been extracted. Can pose environmental risks, especially if they contain toxic substances. Advanced tailings management practices include using dry stacking, where water is removed from tailings, reducing the risk of contamination. Some mines also explore using tailings for carbon capture or repurposing them for other industries like construction. Energy efficiency. Copper production is energy intensive, especially during smelting and electric. However, there are efforts to reduce energy consumption by employing more efficient technologies and using renewable energy sources, such as solar or wind power at mining and refining facilities. For hydrometallurgical refining, SXCW solvent extraction and electrowining, SXU is an increasingly important method for copper extraction, particularly in regions with lower grade ores. It is a two-step process that involves the following. Solvent extraction S. In the first stage, a copper-laden solution, leachate is created by leaching copper from the OR, with sulfuric acid. This solution contains copper in the form of copper ions. In the solvent extraction process, an organic solvent is used to selectively bind to the copper ions, leaving behind impurities. The copper is then stripped from the solvent, using another solution, creating a concentrated copper solution. Electrifying. Ooh. The copper-laden solution is then passed through an electrofining process where an electric current is used to deposit copper metal onto a cathode. This process is similar to electrofining in traditional methods and it produces high-purity copper cathodes. The SXU process is commonly used in regions where copper ores are not rich enough for traditional smelting. It is also used to recover copper from secondary resources like scrap or mine tailings. 5. Copper alloys. Copper is rarely used in its pure form due to its softness, so it's often alloyed with other metals to improve its strength, durability, and other properties. Some common copper alloys include brass. Copper and zinc make up the alloy brass. Brass is widely used in the manufacturing of musical instruments, plumbing fittings, electrical connectors, and more because it is strong, corrosion-resistant, and has a gold-like appearance. Bronze. An alloy of copper and tin. Bronze has been used for thousands of years in tools, weapons, and sculptures. It's tougher and more corrosion-resistant than pure copper. Copper nickel copper is alloyed with nickel for applications like marine equipment and coinage because it's resistant to corrosion, especially in salt water. Cooper t this is a copper nickel alloy with a high resistance to corrosion, especially in seawater. It's commonly used in coinage, marine engineering, and heat exchangers. Cuprous oxide cuco, copper alloys containing oxygen, often used as semiconductors and in some medical devices. 6. Emerging trends and technologies in copper production. 
biominning the use of microorganisms to extract copper from ore, is a rapidly emerging field. Certain bacteria can naturally leach copper from ore deposits, reducing the need for harsh chemicals and improving sustainability. Nanotechnology Researchers are exploring the use of nanotechnology in the mining and refining process to improve the efficiency of copper extraction and to reduce waste. Smart mining, advances in automation, artificial intelligence, AI, and machine learning are revolutionizing copper mining. These technologies help optimize resource extraction, improve safety, and reduce energy consumption. 1. Innovations in Copper Extraction The Role of Biotechnology Biomining or bioleaking is an emerging and exciting method in copper extraction that uses biological organisms, such as bacteria, to help extract copper from ores. The process involves the use of specific bacteria, like Acidethio bacillus for oxidins, which are able to break down sulfide ores and release copper into the solution. Benefits Environmentally friendly. Biomining produces fewer pollutants compared to traditional methods. It uses low-impact techniques and can be used in remote locations with minimal infrastructure. Low energy requirements. Unlike smelting, which requires high temperatures, biomining operates at ambient temperatures, reducing energy consumption. Cost effectiveness. Although it is slower than conventional mining, biomining can be a cost-effective method for extracting copper from low-grade ores or ores that are too complex for traditional methods. Challenges Slow process Biomining takes much longer than traditional mining, sometimes years, making it less efficient for higher-grade deposits. Limited by or type Not all copper ores are amenable to biliacking, and the technology is best suited for specific ore types, such as low-grade sulfide ores copper, and the circular economy. The circular economy aims to minimize waste and maximize the reuse and recycling of materials. Copper, because of its durability and high recyclability, plays a key role in this economic model. Recycling copper. Copper is one of the most recycled metals globally, and its high recyclability is one of its major advantages. About 30 to 40 percent of copper production today comes from recycled materials. Unlike other metals, the properties of copper do not degrade during recycling, meaning recycled copper is just as valuable as newly mined copper. Recycling process, copper scrap from electrical cables, old pipes, scrap metal, etc., is collected, sorted, and melted down in a furnace. The molten copper is refined through the electrifying process to remove impurities and achieve high purity. The energy savings from recycling are significant. Recycling copper uses around 85% less energy than producing copper from ore. Benefits Recycling reduces the need for new mining, decreases environmental impact, and lowers production costs. Challenges The availability of high-quality, scrap copper can be limited, and the quality of the recycled copper can sometimes vary depending on the scrap's origin. End-of-life copper Many applications of copper, like electrical wiring, plumbing pipes, and electronics, have long lifespans. As these products reach the end of their useful life, they can be collected and recycled, reducing the need for new copper extraction. 